Derek Waltz spent years running the investigation into Hezbollah's drug running and money laundering operations in South America. He joins me now along with Mark Morgan, who ran Custom and Border Protection under Trump. Gentlemen, good to have you both on. Derek, first, I just want to start. How insane is it in this moment to have an open border when we know that we have a terrorist faction that operates in Mexico to our south? Well, it's beyond insane. And thank God Mark's on the, on the line here with me because Mark, Tom Holman, Rodney Scott under President Trump, they created the safest border we've ever seen. But here's what I want to show the audience here, Jet, uh, Rob. This is what I received from Admiral Stavridis in Southern Command, U.S. military, in 2007 when we started seeing under the Obama administration Hezbollah's efforts with the Mexican cartels moving $200 million a month in one scheme that we uncovered. And they were moving the proceeds of over 80,000 kilograms of, of cocaine for the cartels. But what's disturbing, Rob, is they had cars that they were buying all over America, used cars, and sending them to West Africa to sell to support Iran's massive radical agenda. Hezbollah, as the proxy, was helping Iran develop funding after the 2006 war with Israel. So now it's a disaster like we've never seen. Mark, the administration has created an app to make it easier for people from all over the world to apply for asylum, which we all know is fake. These people aren't asylum seekers. Uh, the administration dreaming up the most self-destructive ideas possible. They implement them as quickly as they can. And now we are approving migrants. Look at all of these countries. We approve uh, all over the world, the Middle East, Africa, inviting them to walk right in and you can just apply on an app. Yeah, look, Rob, you've talked about this. You and I have talked about this before. This represents, now we have confirmation of what we've referred to as the shell game. They've simply, to bad, uh, avoid bad political optics, rather than actually stemming the flow of illegal immigration and securing our border, they've simply created this app and they're bringing illegal aliens uh, through our front door and they're calling it a legal pathway, and it's not. It's a violation and perversion of the law. And, it, and this is very important. This element's very important. A lot of people think that because of the CBP-1 app, when we're flying them in, that somehow we're vetting them. They're not. That's the big lie, Rob. Let me give you a quick example. A 30-year-old Lebanese single adult male that applies for the CBP-1 app, and it comes on over. Yeah, we're going to ask him a question. Hey, we want to make sure. Now, now, do you sympathize, or are you a Hezbollah terrorist? Well, of course not. Okay, well, no, check. And then yeah. we're going to go and we're going to coordinate with the Leb Lebanese government and say, hey, is this guy a terrorist, by the way? Oh, no, no problem. Go ahead and let him in. I mean, Rob, that's what we're doing. It's, it's, it's insanity. We're relying on what the individual says. We're not getting anything reliable from these countries, but yet we're letting them in our, into our country every single day. Yeah, I, th I think people have this idea that there's this intense vetting process. You've yes. got all these agents questioning this guy in a room. It's like, what a crock that is. We know none of that's happening. We know yep. it's probably some 23-year-old that just got out of college with pink hair asking one question and saying, come on in. We want you here anyway. And and, and, Rob, real quick, so you're absolutely right. And then in addition to that, though, we, we, do we really think we're going to get something legitimate back yeah. from Pakistan, from Yemen, from yeah. Syria, from Lebanon, from Iran? Of course yeah. not. Yeah. What kind of government do they run? Do they even know uh, who their people are? Uh, Derek, explain how the Obama administration shut down your efforts to get Hezbollah out of Mexico and out of Latin America. You know, they wanted to get the Iran nuclear deal done. Hezbollah and Iran are basically the same thing. Iran funds Hezbollah. Um, they, they, they basically shut this down in order to make this deal possible. Well, the Iran deal was the number one priority, and they really didn't provide the resources and support that we needed, even though this was the highest uh, infiltration that I'm aware of by DEA working with the other agencies into a Hezbollah trade-based money laundering scheme that was supporting, uh, you know, Iran. But you got to remember, we were seeing like literally billions of dollars moving into bank accounts in America, going to car businesses in America run by Middle Easterners. And I always had a fear. Eric Holder once asked me what keeps me up at night. And I said, well, actually, that fireball slide when, you know, when uh, narco terrorists and Islamic terrorists come together. But really what was keeping me up at night is I knew and I heard there were sleeper cells potentially coming into America, even back at that time. So what would happen if there was a war in the Middle East? Maybe all these people then would be radicalized in America. But now we have that plus a wide open border with all these unknowns, millions of unknowns in our country. It's really scary, Rob.
It's, it's really scary. It's, it's, it's self-destructive is what it is. It's intentionally self-destructive. Mark, talk about the monumental shift in foreign policy that Obama ushered in, this, this capitulation to the evils of the world. You've got this guilt-ridden yep. policy from our new left-wing leaders that, that are just great apologists for, for what's supposed to be a great nation, we thought was a great nation. Yeah, Rob, this is very important. So we've talked about, we throw terms around like appeasement, and they, they're trying to reach normalization relationships w with Iran. We know is the largest harbor and facilitators of terrorist organizations. They sponsor proxy uh, terrorist organizations like Hezbollah and Hamas. Look, this is way beyond. We have to understand why, why the failed nuclear deal, why the $6 billion, why the refusal uh, to enforce sanctions. And I want to read some. These are not my words. Under Obama, his then director of national security, Brennan, these are his words. Quote, Hezbollah is a very interesting organization. Quote, purely, they, they are not, they are no longer purely a terrorist organization, but, and he goes on to uh, quote them as being a legitimate political party. That's the difference. Under President Trump, we said that's BS. We're not going to address, we're not going to uh, uh, fall prey to, to, to the terrorist organization and the sponsor state of terrorism trying to be a, a legitimate political organization. But that's what Obama and that's what the Biden administration looks at them to be as a legitimate political organization. It's terrifying, the, the level yep. of incompetence that, that exists in, in our government right now. Derek Maltz, Mark Morgan, uh, gentlemen, good to have you both. Thank you. You bet. Thanks, Thank Rob. you, Rob.